a study of shape, structure, color, pattern and form and how form morphs from one to the other in nature. Alright? How, 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 how many of you have studied how a butterfly evolves? Yeah, so there, there are different forms and stages of life and that's how you come up with a beautiful insect like a butterfly. And in its development stage, it is a caterpillar, then it goes into a cocoon, then it comes out with its It's completely different, right? Three things, three complete different forms, shape, color, texture, correct? And then the end result is a beautiful butterfly. butterfly. How many types of morphology? He was asking. How many branches of morphology are there? Three. Three. What are they? Exactly. So, who wants to read these? Go ahead, Paul. First one, Sorry. comparative morphology is analysis of patterns Please. of the locus of structures within the body plan of one organism and forms the basis of taxonomical categorization. Functional morpho morphology is the study of the relationship between the structure and function of morphological features. Experimental morphology is the study of the effects of external factors upon the morphology of organisms under experimental conditions such as the effect of ge genetic mutation. Alright, so we have three kinds of morphology. One is comparative, functional and experimental. How about we build a Diagram. How many of you are familiar with the Venn diagram? Compare, yeah. compare and contrast. Yeah, yeah. So, if you do that, the most idealistic area of research and design would be a combination of comparisons, that is precedence, function, that is how the spaces work how those colors work, how those shapes work, how those patterns work, how the, how the textures work, and then experimental, moving ahead with it. How can we move ahead with all these three combined together? That is the next question. What is architecture? Yeah. Architecture is both the process and product of planning, designing, and construction. Yes. So what happens when you marry these two? concepts. More architecture. Yes. So what are we looking at? We we're looking at how these forms are planned, designed, and constructed. Mm -hmm. So like we have different forms, shapes, different um, different you know style. Let's say your hand it has very different shapes. What architecture does? It sort of mimics that shape to create a form create a structure and then we do that by planning design and the final steps construction. Very good, very good. So that's what we're going to do for this project. Alright? This is exactly what you just said. Right? Who wants to read? He said it in the most simplest forms, but we're going to give a complex form. It's all you just read, so let's give it to Aniel or Linda who wants to read. Okay. Uh, theory, morphology and architecture. Morphology is a branch of bioscience dealing with the study of the form and structure. Architecture is both the process and the product uh, of planning, designing, and construction. Morphitecture borrows from morphology and architecture to create spaces which are unique and symbiotic in nature. It grows from nature to create forms and spaces, volumes, that are specifically based on one or more characteristics. A biomimetic approach to design while emulating natural systems derives solutions through the utilization of a design process that seeks to satisfy the core requisites of a design in a holistic manner. This approach avoids a sequential component design process and attempts to develop a design product in a concurrent manner. Okay. <laughs> I'll explain it in very simple form. Compare your building to your body, all right? 
we have corridors in buildings correct yeah. we have veins and arteries in our in our body correct yeah. what happens if our veins and body and arteries are choked we die what happens we receive an heart attack right we get a heart attack yeah. right that's what happens if you have blockages in your corridors of your building it chokes right what is the most important space in a building entrance right how would you compare that to your own body your physical appearance let's compare it to one's physical appearance that would be more fun that would be the facade the facade yeah and and how would you consider like the entrance, the entrance? would be sort of sort of like your mouth cuz you're taking the food in and just putting stuff in and how would be a mouth because the entrance of the building is the doors right yes that's where the people go in and then do your Let's compare into the body. Yes. Yeah, let's compare the food to the people. Like, mm -hmm. let's say food, you eat it, and it goes through your veins, whatever. It brings you nutrition. So it's the same thing. So what? How do you think their experience should be? Mm -hmm. The experience goes two ways here. One is for your own body, mm -hmm. and two is what is going going into your mouth. What is what are you eating? The experience goes two ways. Now let's compare it outside. visitors to your building and how your building reacts to those visitors is the second thing right correct mm -hmm. and how would you describe your circulation spaces and they have to to your body um the some of the uh the design of the body or whole Um, mm -hmm. I think we. Um, I actually tried one time. Um, I was looking at the uh, intestine. Intestine. Mm -hmm. And then the how the intestine is designed to help um, the uh, the composition of our. Uh huh. Uh huh. It says that they they take the form in a way that um, the, the intestine actually takes uh, digest in a mm -hmm. most efficient way. Mm -hmm. But the transition to architecture is that um, maybe we can build uh, from the plan. Uh -huh. We can build the the the, uh, the, the space mm -hmm. like the intestine, mm -hmm. so so that the um, the function that we can get give it to building is that um, to do this kind of yeah. What is speak louder? Yeah. Okay. So the intestine looks like this, like it's not straight. But uh, why you know, the intestine takes this form is that uh, they they need a lens mm -hmm. so that the um, the the body actually takes the nutrition and everything mm -hmm. in a most efficient way. Mm -hmm. So if the building looks like this in a floor plan, maybe uh, there's a direct access to the fresh air. Yes. Those kind of functions. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's what I think. Yeah. That's a that's a very good point, sir. Very good. So we are looking at always remember the skin of the building, the facade of the building is very important when it comes because it plays two major roles. One, how it controls the interior. How does the skin of your building control the interior spaces? That's that's what we are looking at, right? This is an interior design class. We are looking at interior spaces. So how are we? There, there are many structures. If you remember, we studied about the nine bridges structure, right? Shigeruban. How many of you remember that? Right. So how does the structure itself help the interior spaces of the building? Did you see any walls in that structure? Walls built in that structure? No, right? It had huge columns. Remember? Yeah. Huge columns. that divide the space the columns itself acted as a wall the screen of the building acted as a skin okay yes all right oh, okay 
when when you are talking about the biomimicry is learning from nature mimicking nature if you follow and take up take up that approach that approach is called biomimetic approach i'll give you an example there is a water desalination plant in dubai that is being planned based on how the penguin cleans salt water to fresh water using a gland present right in front of its beak near its beak so based on that process there is a desalinization plant that's coming up in dubai isn't 